So here's the truck up on the hoist and it's not too bad. The frame is in good shape. Uh, Al had a good look at the truck and there's the steering way up here is there's a donut that's totally missing that needs to be replaced. Uh, there's dual fuel tanks and this is the second tank. We're going to take that out for now until we get some body work done on the truck. Um, but everything, there's a few seals at the back, uh, axle seals that need replacing, brakes are working. Um, I, it has an electric fuel pump that we're going to replace with the original mechanical fuel pump. That's, here's the fuel filter. So, yeah, a lot of mechanical work to do, not a lot, but uh, some. That's the first step. And then over the winter, we're gonna tackle the body. So Al's got some people that can do a good job on that. You can see some of the floor. Here's the floor mat up here. Yeah, so definitely body work is required, but uh, you know, once it's mechanically done, I can drive it out of here. I don't need a safety or anything at the moment and then uh, get the body done over winter and then it'll be all restored. I'm going to leave the paint original. It is the original paint on the truck so I'll just uh, work away, patch all the holes and yeah, make it a good, solid, reliable truck. It's the next day and we've got sunshine and you can see the first good look at what's left of the tree. And uh, Scott, what have you done? <laughs> what did you do to my tree? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> the decision was cut and then cut and then cut. <laughs> so Nigel, I think the actual answer to this tree is take it away yeah. and work on these two little seedlings at the front. <laughs> that is a good idea. So we, just kind of remove this section. Yeah, take this section away these. and we'll work with those two little seedlings at the front and I think we stand a better chance with this one. I think we'll get a better looking tree <laughs> in the end. <laughs> We've had a good look at the tree today and because we removed so many branches there may be a better front to pot the tree in. Uh, this is the pot we're using. It's a plastic rectangular pot and we're going to look around now and see if we can find if there's a better front for the tree or not. And uh, if not, we'll pot it with this as the front. But, uh, you know, removing all these branches has opened up a, a whole new range of possibilities for a front for this tree. So we're going to look at the tree now and just see if we can find a more suitable front or something that might look a little bit better. Um, so I'm going to rotate it around having a good look at the structure that we can see mm -hmm. as we go. There's an interesting root structure there which would be currently pretty much round at the back with our current front. Um, and then as we get further round we find our gnarly curved root wrapping around this one branch here. Um, maybe depending on the height of our roots, that where we plant it, when we repot the tree, we could uh, maybe have the front somewhere around here, uh, using the unwanted feature as a feature. Um, but actually, looking round, um, I don't see much 
much change possibly for the front um, when we remove the wires to carry out the repot that may produce even further options for the front um, as this this sort of view could lend itself nicely to be the front also so I think we're going to remove the wires now and so yeah we'll do that now so I think if we start with this branch here we'll unwind the wire that we put in place yesterday mm -hmm. it's not so critical these branch positions now that we've cut them all off we've just left with a little section so if it springs up a bit it's not like this big foliage pad it moves up in front of something else it's let's see what happens out of the way we'll take the thing oh, hasn't moved a whole lot has it no but it's no longer in parallel competing with this branch here i suppose so it may yeah it looks it may be slightly better kind of got the living part on this side and this dead part on this side it looks looks pretty good actually okay and then we have another one over here that we'll need to remove so let's well, that one's going to be a little harder i think we need to push this maybe just go like this eh yep take the rubber off and this one was quite parallel with the trunk so it may spring up over time but uh it doesn't look too bad at this moment. No, and it's possible we may even chop it off too. Yeah. Who knows if it's just looking too strange from the front view here. Once again, we've been doing a lot of thinking about the tree. Uh, there is a feature in here. There's three roots that are really nice. It's a nice feature. This isn't such a good feature, but this is a really nice feature. There's three roots coming up that are almost kind of braided together. And... I think, you know, that's something we want to show off and those roots will become thicker and, you know, more pronounced in the future. So, so to show off those roots, um, I'm thinking more of a side angle. And what bothers me about picking this as a front is that the tree starts from way back here and then it, it comes out at you, comes to forward and then grows up. And you know it doesn't have that root flare at the base which makes it look stable it it maybe looks like it's coming off the edge of a cliff but it's coming straight towards you whereas if we rotate it around more it becomes more of a slanting style tree instead of you know it looks like I don't know anyway um, so if we change the front view just slightly uh, I think this thing this horn will have to go off of here. It's like poking you right in the eye and it kind of, it gets in the way of this back branch. So, you know, this back branch is quite nice back here, but I think this just has to go completely. And it'll also show off those roots a little more. Your eye will be kind of drawn in and you'll see the nice features rather than all the bad features. We're going to remove that this part the big horn sticking out here and it's going to be a tricky removal because I think I think there's a root behind it that actually flows really nicely into the ground so we'll want to keep that root without injuring it and get rid of this part which has it has a root attached to it so I'm going to try bending it out of the way and then Scott's going to try and come in and remove it and I it almost will probably break off. It won't break, but... Okay, ready? All right, here we go. Here we go. Oh. That's not bad. Not bad at all. And we'll come in at this. That's actually a really good cut. That, uh, and then we'll come in. Uh, we'll use the different pruners to cut it off at the soil line there. Just so it doesn't dull those ones. Yep. So at the soil level, these need sharpening anyway. So that's why I'm using them down here by the soil. If you're cutting anywhere near soil, it'll dull your tools, so you should use something that needs sharpening. <laughs> you don't want to use your good tools to cut down at the soil line. And there we go. I think I should come in and just maybe just get the bottom of this off.
Yeah, like that. There's just a little piece sticking out. Okay, so yes, we've removed the front tusk type branch that was coming out of the front there. And as you can see, that has made a remarkable difference to the view of the tree from that side. And true to form, uh, we're thinking that removing this branch here will improve the overall composition of the tree even further. So I'm going to come in from the side here and I'm going to try and get in and remove this branch. So here I go. Let's do bonsai. Done. There's also a long branch out the back here. Now that we're making all this lower part of the tree more compact, I'm going to cut that one back too. So I'll cut it back to here. Just, it, it's too long. It kind of spoils the miniature illusion of the tree. When Scott removed this big tusk-like branch sticking out here, behind it was this beautiful flowing root structure. And it's, it's one of the best features on the tree. Uh, apart from these three braided kind of roots, this is a really nice feature, having this nice flowing root structure coming down into the ground. It, yeah, it really helps sell the tree as a miniature tree. We're going to be repotting this tree out of season. This is, uh, we're getting towards fall. The tree will start to go dormant. But this tree has been growing vigorously all summer. And there is probably another month and a half left of growing in the summer. So if we repot it now, the roots will definitely recover by fall and it should be okay. Uh, I've reduced all the load on the top so the roots don't have to do a lot of work at first. They've just got to kind of repair themselves from the pruning. And the pot we're using isn't a really tiny pot. It, there's lots of uh, space in it for roots so I don't expect we'll be taking, you know, 75% of the roots off. I can see maybe reducing the roots by maybe, you know, a third to maybe even a half, depending how much they've grown. So I think my gut feeling tells me that we're safe to repot this time of year after what we did to the tree. The first step for repotting is to get the tree out of the pot. So if I can get you to hold the pot and I'll pull up on the tree. So here we go. Ooh, lots of roots. Lots of roots, wow. Here's a close up of the roots. You can see they look really nice and healthy. They are really matted in the bottom here. There's probably like a thick layer of just roots. Um, so I think it's a good, a good thing that we're repotting. Yep. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is to save the little seedlings that are uh, coming through nicely here at the what was the edge of the pot so we'll just work the soil away and see if we can find where the roots are going to so we'll just just tease tease away at it break break the soil to slowly release the root system for the seedlings to get as much of the root that we can and there's one of the little seedlings. And if we come back to its brother here, we'll work away and try and get as much of the root system for this little seedling as possible. If we can just tease it out from where, where it is. And there she goes. So there's nice little root systems on both those seedlings. So we have the tree out of the pot and we have saved our seedlings. So our next step is to start working on the roots. Now, in order to do that, the pot that we're using here is considerably shallower than the pot that it was in. And if we look at the roots that we've got to work with, that's just a real, real thick mat of roots that we're just going to really struggle to uh, 
to rate these out. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure the position of the pot to where, where the root ball and we're going to saw the bottom half of the root mass away. So obviously this, this has been planted before in the bonsai zone so we know where the roots are, we know where the tap roots are, we know where the feeder roots are. If it hadn't have been um, repotted before we certainly wouldn't go drastic with the saw and start sawing off the bottom half of the of the root ball so you know you guys out there you know just be careful if you haven't repotted your plant tree previously and you don't know where your roots are don't go attacking it with the saw just in case you take off the one major root and kill your tree okay so we're ready to start sawing off the roots now so we're going to bring it to the edge of the table so that we can control our tree without damaging it uh, we'll just lean it over the edge we'll grab our saw and here we go so it seems to be there's some rocks and substrate in the bottom of here which we're going to be hitting as we saw so we'll be careful not to totally ruin the saw but if we get through the the main of the the root ball we'll be able to start pulling it away and working with it so yep we'll have to go considerably deeper than that we'll turn it and we'll go again So we'll see where we've got with that, see if we can pull it away. And we do have a lot of material in the middle of all these roots. But they're coming away really nice. We'll just get in there with the saw a bit more. Pull it away. Oh. There we go. Okay, so we're going to start raking the roots. So we're working in a radial pattern to make sure that we look after the radial roots. So we just continue to work our way around the top of the root mass, root ball, and just slowly and gently tease out the roots. Just keep going, just keep steadily coming through, making sure that we're looking after those radial roots that are coming out not not being too concerned about the crossing roots that you can hear ripping we're not too worried about them they'll grow back and if anything they cause a little bit of a hindrance as they grow more and more because they'll restrict the flow of the the water and the feed that you're trying to give to your trees so we're kind of actually doing it a bit of a favour. So I think we've done as much as we can from the top now. So we're going to flip the tree over and we're going to work our roots from the bottom again in an outward motion bringing all your roots in that nice radial pattern. So all the time I'm just being careful to make sure that the the branches on the top of the tree aren't hitting the table or being damaged in any way as we rotate the tree to allow us to continue raking in our circular motion. It's amazing how dense the roots are all the way through the root ball. We cut that big piece off the bottom and there's still all kinds of fibrous roots in every every layer right from the top of the surface of the soil all the way to the bottom of the pot. That's a good sign when your roots are nice and healthy and they fill the entire pot. It means you have the right soil, you're watering it correctly, and you're letting the tree grow. So having a lovely dense structure like we've got here, we know that in the future we will get a nice dense canopy uh, 
at some stage when it when it starts growing back in you know these these roots down in the bottom let us know that it's a really nice strong tree and uh, working on it out of the correct potting season uh, we needn't worry too much um, it should recover and with all these fabulous dense roots we can be confident that come a year two years we will have a new dense canopy on the top okay so we've done really well raking out the roots and we're just getting into the middle of the root ball with the the root hook it seems to be the the best solution at the moment to get in there and get all the old soil out okay so we've got a lot of the soil removed from from the roots so what we're going to do is we're going to just check it for how it's going to fit into the pot before we start trimming the roots away and it fits in quite well um, we've definitely got quite a bit of trimming to do but uh, on the whole it uh, definitely fits into the pot so we've been looking at how the tree looks in this pot and it looks a little bit too squashed in there like you know we've we've forced it into the pot so we've got another pot here that's slightly bigger a little bit more shallow and we're thinking that if we were to put it into this pot it's got plenty of room around the sides for the roots to grow back in and there's also plenty of room put it in just slightly off center and we think this might be a much better pot for this tree so we've been hard at work raking out the roots and we've we've you know really got as much of the old soil out as we can and got the roots to a, a nice satisfactory position so I think the next thing we need to do is we're gonna go and wash the roots so off we go to the frog pond to give the roots a wash so we're gonna wash the roots here shake it about a bit get into all the nooks and crannies and really try and give that soil a chance to get out of our root system we wash the roots to take out any larvae anything that might be living in there just get it as clean as we can get some nice air pockets in there for our new soil the roots on our cedar are all washed out and now it's time to do the final combing to get them all combed in a radial pattern and then we'll come in and select the roots we keep and give it a general trimming. So here we go. There's always some sections, some matted sections that you'll comb out. But don't be alarmed, they had to go anyway. As we said, we need space in here for water and fertilizer to get in between the roots. And once it gets too matted, it's like a clogged drain in your sink. It's just, uh, you get our a mat of uh, like fine hair in here and the water just doesn't penetrate into the root mass so yeah so you're always going to get sections tearing out like this so it's getting very airy and the whole tree is really light now because we've removed almost all the soil from it I'm just kind of prying apart the roots getting into all these sections that were hidden away before and getting them combed out And you can see that the roots now are fairly tough. All those fine fibrous ones are being combed out and we're left with kind of our major roots. And those fine fibrous roots grow back really quickly. They, you know, within a week, they'll be active again and growing. So usually after repotting, the first week is critical. Um, taking care of the tree the best you can, misting it every day, or more than once a day, two or three times a day if you can. Um, keeping it out of the wind, out of full sun. You need a bright spot, but not, you know, the full 
hot after afternoon sun bearing down on it. You need uh, evening and morning sun's good and then shade it in the afternoon until it recovers and starts growing and then you can put it back in the full sun. So that first week is critical. You have to really baby the tree and after that it's uh, you know toughens up and gets back to normal. The root system is all cleaned out now so now the actual root work begins. Um, so the first thing we notice is that this one thick root that curls around this branch it goes around here and then at about this point it starts to go straight down into the soil and we checked the end of it and it was pruned off I guess last time I repotted it right here you can see a round section about this diameter and since then it's grown all kinds of new roots all around here so we can we can prune that part of the root off without worrying about losing the tree. It's just basically doing very little. There's a few feeder roots coming off it but not very many so and that'll kind of give the root ball it, it'll flatten it from the bottom so you know someday if you ever wanted to put it in a really shallow pot you could do that. And also get all these roots growing in a nice flat radial pattern which will help just help the overall appearance of the tree in the future. So I'm going to come in here with the loppers and just take that root off to probably probably about this kind of a height here. So taking that that end off it. Because I, I think the eventual root plane that we'll be planting it at will be I, it won't be any lower than here and it could even be as high as up to here. So once that roots off we'll kind of pick a root plane or a soil line and then go from there for pruning the roots. So I'm just taking that thick root back now, taking the tip off it. Here I go. So there it is. So we'll have a look at that. Let's see some more of the original soil. That got it back. I don't think you would ever pot this tree any lower than that, so I think that's a good height to prune it off at. We're going to do the final rake out and then actually start pruning the roots. So we're just arranging all the, the roots in a radial pattern, trying to untangle the ones that are all twisted and curled up. So it's just a matter of getting in there with your hands and the root rake and just sorting them all out. What you don't want is roots that grow out and then kind of curl around underneath the tree. It, it just makes this knotted mess of roots that you can never really root prune. And they, as they get thicker, it just gets harder and harder to sort the roots out. Yeah, the length of some of these roots are just huge. Okay, so I think we'll start by just pruning a peripheral, peripheral peripheral, peripheral, <laughs> a peripheral prune around the edge. So I'll just come around and cut around. And then I'm going to see how it fits in the pot. So I'm just looking for the front of the tree, which is about here. And we wanted it offset in the pot and kind of leaning a bit this way, I think. I think that's, yep. Something like that. So, so the roots at the front and the back need a little more pruning. So I'll just come in and prune them away a bit. So that fits in quite nicely. And then the back is overhanging, so again, I'll come in and prune some off that. Like, like that. And then I want to come underneath and prune off anything that's growing straight down to make the root mass flatter, the root ball flatter. 
So I'll come in and start pruning away. Any of these heavy roots will get pruned back quite hard. Like that. And then I'll try it out in the pot again. So this was the front somewhere here, I believe. Maybe more like that. It's fitting nicely in the pot. So the next step is to go in and then look at the roots and sort out the ones we want to keep and the ones we want to prune away. So keeping our best roots and removing the ones that aren't growing in a good direction or don't look very good. So I'm looking at these, these nice roots that continue down off of here. And we definitely want to keep all those. They're really nice. Um, there's a root here that it comes down, goes across, and then it starts growing up back into the root mass or up into the root base. So that, that needs to be pruned away, at least to maybe here. And there's, there's a root here that kind of curls around in a strange way. I'll prune that back. I'll take the whole bottom off that root. Um, so there was these roots here. There's three roots, one, two, three, that really, they're really nice. They come down and they kind of curl on the ground. So there's one root that's kind of crossing them here that I think I want to get rid of. Um, yeah, it was a little bit fused there, but unless I can redirect it, let me see. There, I untangled it and I can reposition it so I don't have to cut that away. So now you can see these roots flowing down nicely into the soil. So I'm coming around the tree now just, you know, checking each section at a time, looking for nice radial roots and pruning away the really badly tangled roots. These are quite wild, the roots on this side. Um, you know, you have roots underneath them. So, you've got to pick the best roots. And, you know, if this is your root plane down here, these roots are kind of growing high. They're almost like aerial roots. And I think some of them we should get rid of. It's almost like the tree is walking on its root system and to me, that doesn't make a, look, a tree look stable. It looks very tippy. Uh, if, the tree, if the roots are tight down, it, it looks much better, but um, I think some of them should probably go. And I'm thinking, starting with these two, because there's some really nice roots down below them. So I'll take them right off, and I think I'll have to use the branch pruners for that. Okay. All right, so here I go. Just pruning them off flush. And another one here. So now you can see these nice roots that are underneath those roots and it, it looks much better. Um, there's kind of a branch here that has a, you know, two or three aerial roots coming off of it. They're kind of bizarre. It's unlikely you would see something like that in nature. I'm just taking a dead root off here. So, my feeling is it would probably look better without them and just keep these as the main roots of the tree. Uh, if it was a ficus, we would definitely go with those roots, but on a cedar, it's just a strange feature. And it's because the tree was probably buried deeper when it was originally planted, so. I'm removing these roots. We've just got too much going on at this root base. It looks like 
you know, a tropical ficus tree. Not a... So here it goes. This is a fairly big root. There. And there's a big stub of another branch I'm going to remove also. A little... So that kind of cleans up the root base on that side quite a bit. I'm just going to untangle the roots that are below now. There's another aerial root coming off this branch. Um, I'm going to leave that because it's so close to the, the trunk that I think it'll eventually fuse in. And it, it kind of helps take the, your eye away from this curly root that grows around the branch. It's a distraction, I guess. And everything else, I don't see anything that's really bothering me on the root base. There is a, an aerial root here I could remove. And there's a root I'm just going to prune back a stub here. It, that last one I pruned. And everything else is looking quite good. There's nothing that stands out to my eye as being hideous or, you know, a bad root, a root that's too thick, a root that's too straight. It all looks quite, quite in order. I think the tree can be planted now. Maybe just a few more of these longer roots off here. A little bit more off the bottom maybe. I do want to come into these these three roots here that I really like, I'm worried that they may become a future problem. They kind of come down and then they curl in under the root base here somewhere. And you know how I explained that I didn't want roots all curling and gnarled. So I'm, I'm just going to sort them out. I want to, I don't want to break them off or prune them away, but I do want to just see what's going on with them. So I'm going to come in with the pointy end here and just try and separate them and just see what's going on so they're not growing in a strange direction. If I can kind of guide them to grow more in a radial pattern, I will. So they're, they're in here and they're very tangled. Oh, I see, it's part of this root here, that one. So I can untangle that a bit and bring it out from the root mass like that and so that's going not a bad direction actually and then there's a couple of other ones underneath it here that I also want to untangle like that I just think they would be a future problem someone is you know say what are these roots curled underneath here they're just becoming ugly Not easy to untangle. There. So again, if I can encourage them in a radial direction, I will. And that's helped a lot. They've, they've come to the front of the root, root ball, or whatever you call it, root mass, root plane, root plate, plate of roots. There, so they're out front now. So they're not kind of curling down and going underneath the root ball. They're kind of more, as radial as I can get them at this point in time. So I, I think that was a good step forward for the tree. I'll just break them a little bit here. Yeah, like that. So now we're ready to plant the tree. Finally, after a day and a half, we are ready to repot the tree. So here's the pot we've chosen. It's a plastic pot. It's made in Japan. So, you know, it's a real Japanese plastic pot. Finest quality you can get anywhere. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is cut a drainage screen for the bottom of the pot. And then we'll put a layer of soil on the bottom and then position the tree on another mound of soil and kind of work it around until we get the perfect view to show off our lovely tree.
Bonsai J has this brilliant idea of turning the pot upside down. And then we put our drainage screen on the bottom and we just trim it to the bottom shape of the pot and then your screen fits perfectly. And I had never thought of that. And when he did that, I just thought, that's brilliant. I, I just, I'll use that technique forever. These scissors do everything. They prune roots, they <laughs> cut drainage screens. Super scissors. So we'll turn that over and that does, screen in our pot. does fit nicely. Perfect. Can't complain about that. And we'll add a layer of soil now. About here. Yep. This is about the front of the tree and we wanted it offset to the one side and kind of leaning a bit. So I've got some soil here. Yeah. And I'll just get that in there. And if you want to... I'll put the tree on top. And I'll have to come out front and just check it all. Um, I think I want it rotated around a little more than that. That is looking quite good. I want the apex vertical here. So it'll be a slanting tree that comes up. And this often happens in nature. The tree is on unstable ground or it was growing from the edge of a forest, clearing the other trees. So it grows out on an angle and then they straighten up and go vertical when they hit the sunlight. So it's a very natural kind of style. And the height in the pot, it's a little high right now. I'm just going to ease it down a bit. And that's looking quite nice right there. I'm just making sure all the roots are combed out. I'll just get my root rake, do a final combing out of the roots. Getting them all growing in a nice radial pattern, if possible. And that's about the best. And then I'm just going to do a final check. Can you hold that? Uh, Got it. Just all right. I'm gonna look from the distance. How's she looking? I think it could be moved to the left hand side a little bit. I think we've got to go to the left just a bit. It's a little tight in the pot over this side. So I'm gonna try sliding it over a bit. We'll try it there. So Scott's gonna hold it and yeah, that's the spot. I'll let I'll hold it and Scott can come back and have a look at it and see if he likes the position in the pot. Yeah, that think? looks that looks good to me. Does that look okay? Yeah, yeah. Anything you would change or do you like the rotational angle or if if I was anything I would rotate slightly uh, clockwise as I'm looking at it. So you so, want yeah. to see more of the yeah, more of uh, the back but only, here. only a small. Okay. A little more. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay. And if I can get you to hold that, Scott, I can have another look. Ah, oh, yeah, that looks good. Looks good, yeah. Yeah, I really like those. I like these roots coming down here and then the three roots underneath look fantastic. They just, it just yeah. sinuous that, and it flows in. That tiny in. little bit was just yeah. taking them too far that way. And yeah. that tiniest of movements, I think just brought and them into play nicely. Front to back, I think it's quite nice in the pot. Um, I think it's all quite good. Yep. The uh, trunk is just slightly forward of the center line and we can't move it back further without you know pruning off a lot of roots. I think it's I think it's good and I think our apex is upright. I think we can fill it in with soil now. So I can hold that and we'll start filling it in and working it into the roots as we fill it in with soil. And these roots are very tough. They're not 
soft and fleshy roots. So, you know, when I'm poking it around with the root rake, it doesn't harm the roots at all. Whereas, you know, some trees have really, the yew tree for instance, and some spruces have a really soft fleshy root. So you would just want to go in and kind of twirl your chopstick or whatever you're using. Do you want me to hold this here? So sure, and I can come around this side. Okay, and we'll work that layer in. I'll, um, yeah, I'll, I'll work it in. So cleaning out all those matted sections of root allows the new soil to get in between the major roots and then it'll regrow all those matted roots very quickly. And having all that nice bonsai soil in will have plenty of oxygen in between. It will, it'll get lots of oxygen, it to grow. lots of water, lots of fertilizer, everything a plant needs. Okay, and I'll just get it some more soil. Come with this side? Oh, it's on that side. I've okay. got you. Oh, the cover's come off. Okay, that's all right. I was going to take that off anyway. Our sponsorship ended from that <laughs> company. <laughs> I wasn't sponsored. I'll uh, okay. borrow one of your knitting needles, Nigel, yeah. and I'll work it in yeah. from this side. As long as you're not making a jumper. No jumpers. <laughs> no sweatshirts. No. Jump woolly jumpers. Woolly jumper. Now, on this planting, I see possibly building the soil up a little higher on this side of the tree and having it a little lower on this side so it gives a slight impression of growing on the edge of a cliff or a hill or something like that. So, so right now the bonsai soil is really dry and it flows in between the roots really nicely. If your soil is wet, it's really hard to work into the roots. I think this poor tree will breathe a sigh of relief when we're finished it. They'll say, ah, oh, finally they've left me alone. There's nothing left to cut off it. <laughs> That's looking pretty good. These plastic pots, you can also tap the sides of the pot like this, and it, it helps work it in. Some people get one of those uh, orbital sanders and they put it against here and it vibrates it and it just shakes all the bonsai soil in but we try not to waste electricity around here this is green bonsai not not destroy the planet bonsai we do something green every day exactly I know what you're thinking <laughs> That is looking good. Now, I'm going to feel how stable the tree is in the pot. It's not too bad. I can see putting maybe a rock on this side, just to hold it steady, but it's not too bad. I'm gonna step back and have a look at it, just to make sure we're not doing something drastically wrong. So the next thing to do is to give our little tree a well-deserved drink of water. There we go, making sure we get it well, well soaked through and just keep going until it comes dribbling out of the bottom of the pot. There's that rice crispy sound. Yeah. The next thing for us to do is to get some moss and maybe some sand and do a bit of landscaping and uh, we'll be back to show you what we've done. And then when you get to these little, see how I've got a crack between the two there? 
You just break off a little piece. Just squish it in there like that. It's the end of day two of our cedar project. It, uh, we almost didn't tackle this tree because it was so overwhelming. It was just this sprawling tree and we had all these ideas of designing it to look like, you know, an ancient weather beaten tree that was just barely hanging on for survival. And I think the final design sort of gives that spirit to the tree. Yeah, we stretched it a bit. We took a lot off the tree. <laughs> Um, I think you're... there were plenty of points in which we could have quite easily given up and just gone to repotting any one of your plants that just need a, a repot or a, a, a prune of the uh, canopy or something like that. I think when we both went to bed last night we were thinking why did we pick that tree to do a video on and I was thinking you know I don't have to publish this video. Oh. <laughs> Maybe we don't want to publish this tree, what it looks like, because it it was such a bizarre tree and a, a difficult tree to work on. No, it was. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I had a lot of doubts all through the project. We kept taking more and more off, and I was thinking we're going to be left with a stick or those two little seedlings in the front. Yeah, and it kept evolving and, and changing. Changing and... and the every front changed and moved around and came and, back. And yeah, and every time we pruned something off, it gave... A new look and a new it just it evolved it didn't we didn't look at the design initially and say that 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 has to come off it was it slowly took shape over the two days and uh, so the result were you happy with the result I think it's the best that that tree could ever look I agree <laughs> I, I think everything we I did, think they're gonna I think they're gonna be coming in with offers for you to ship that tree to <laughs> some rich person who wants to uh, have it. It's that good. Yeah. I, I don't think we <laughs> underthought this tree. I think we did a lot of thinking and a little bit of work on it. Uh, I think, and I, I think that's important to do on a tree is to think about everything you're doing, why you're doing it, uh, and then see how the tree looks. And so, yeah, it was a, we didn't do anything without thinking about it, that's for no. sure, did we? We no, discussed we used every detail of it. A lot of artistic license. Uh, we're going to do this. Okay, we've done that. Now we're going to chop it all apart and do something yeah. totally different. Change so their mind. It changed, it changed, it evolved. Till eventually we got left with what we're left with. Yeah, and I'm actually, for the first time since I've had this tree, and that's been three, four four years now it's the very first time that i've actually liked this tree that i said it looks like a tree and i've actually liked it so so should we see what it looks like should we show you, everyone do you think they're ready for it are you ready for it here it comes here we go our work is all finished today on the cedar tree so here's a look at the final result for today we mossed in this side of the tree to look like the lush landscape we added sand to this side to kind of look like a shoreline maybe or just to give a change of, of landscape. And then we added a little rock in here with kind of a moss island just to break up the sand area a bit. And I think the landscape turned out really nice. And I think the tree looks really good too. It looks like a, for the first time, this tree actually kind of looks like a tree. It, uh, it looks like a miniature version of a tree you would see way up north. This tree will only get better in the future, developing the canopy to get that sort of triangular form in the upper part of the tree, maybe even some weeping branches. There's a lot of possibilities for the future, but we've got a great start up here. There's lots of fine branching that can be worked with in future. So, so that's a look at the tree. I'll put it on a turntable now and we'll spin it around so you can see it from all sides. So we've got the tree on the turntable now, so we can show you it from all the different angles. One thing just to point out is we are going to reduce this gin down in size because it's rather large for where it is. So at some stage we will be reducing that. But if you take a nice look at it from all the angles, you can see the sand side, which is the harsh environment the rock with the moss growing around it 
and it's trying to grow into that area but it's being beaten back and then we've got the change of the landscape here where it's greening up and we've got all the green on this side matching with the life side of the landscape so as you can see as it rotates round the life side works the struggle for life on this side and yeah I think we didn't do a bad job with this tree and there you go back to the front So I've been Scott Winard from Let's Do Bonsai. And I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining us today in the Bonsai Zone. Hi everyone, I'm Nigel Saunders. And I'm Scott Winard. And today we're going... Ah, we forgot the channels. That's right, let's do it. Like a puzzle of baked beans that you just take forever to put together. Yeah, when I said the baked beans, I just thought to myself, what am I saying? I'm just watching your hair flaring up. Isn't that cool, eh? <laughs> oh, he's doing it to me now. There you go. <laughs> so, I've been Scott Winard from Let's Do Bonsai. And I'm Nigel Saunders from the Bonsai Zone. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video. I know, that's not what I wanted to say. So, I've been Scott Winard from Let's Do Bonsai. And I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me today in the Bonsai Zone. And we'll see you. No, that's not what I wanted to say. Thanks for watching today in the bonsai zone. Yeah, thanks do, for do, watching do, today do, 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 in the bonsai zone. <laughs>